This is like, it's like a tank, right? It's just so solid and so, like the ribs are huge. Like there, it's, it's insane. And it's way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. You know, like seeing the skull is one thing, but seeing the rest of the animals, like, like it's, you have to see it to believe it. Like it's gonna be amazing when it's all up. That's coming really quickly. Well, I start with a big jacket full of matrix, mostly, and I uncover it with usually the dental picks or the blade. So I start with one side, turn it over, do the other side, it's about another couple weeks. We flip the jacket, then another, say, two weeks per side. Um, because there's so much matrix, they're full of surprises. Like, they might have, like, a little floating rib a uh, head here or like a little floating tendon there and it's always like you're working away and you're like, oh, what's this? It's a surprise. <laughs> so you might wonder, what does Triceratops have to do with this part of the world? Well, the thing is, is that Triceratops is from the time right at the end of the dinosaur era, just before the cataclysmic events that changed their world and led to the demise of most dinosaurs, except birds. Now in Australia, we don't actually have a particularly good fossil record of that critical, pivotal moment in Earth history. So to present that to people in a museum setting and learn about it, we turn to the very best window we have on the very end of the age of dinosaurs, and that's between about 66 and 68 million years ago in Montana, Wyoming, South and North Dakota in the United States of America. Australia doesn't have the best record of dinosaur age rocks and therefore fossils for most of the continent. Where we do, those rocks formed at the bottom of a shallow inland sea. And there's only a few other spots around the continent, particularly in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria, where we have insights into the Cretaceous period. When our museum scientists work excavating dinosaur fossils in Victoria, we find that the fossil bone is actually much softer than the rock around it. People describe it as chiseling a Mars bar out of concrete. It's pretty difficult. The Triceratops fossil has been really special to prepare because the bones are fairly strong and the rock around it is fairly soft. So it can be manually prepared by hand really carefully, very slowly and deliberately. And that means that the surfaces of the bones are immaculate. They're beautiful. <laughs>